Staying right up here with me. So, this is a Medicaid conference, right, Steve? Okay, all right. Which one? Okay. All right. Uh, good afternoon. Appreciate everyone coming out today and uh, for a discussion, and uh, we'll have time for questions after, but uh, I want to intro this with uh, just some brief remarks. When the governor asked me to take on this role, and I assumed this position in March of 2015, we were two months in uh, to the takeover of Little Rock School District. And I knew then that uh, before I took the job that this would be one of the most difficult issues that would continue to be part of, uh, of the work that I would have to do. And as, uh, as I looked and the AD team looked at what needed to happen there to get started of turning around the academic distress in Little Rock, what we found was uh, an organization that needed to be restored as an organization. Certainly the work that Mr. Curris had uh, initiated under Mr. Wood, if you all remember, he headed up a team that uh, was looking at the finances. Also knowing that Baker's background as an organizational leader, as a business leader, was someone who uh, served a, uh, a unique purpose for the time uh, he was serving in that role in, in an unofficial capacity. And when it came time that we had to make uh, a change, when uh, Mr. Suggs was no longer able to continue, there was only one person really that stood out in my mind as being the person who could bring that organizational change to LRSD, and that was Baker Curse. And he tackled that with uh, great enthusiasm, and he loves the Little Rock School District, he truly loves the Little Rock School District. And through the last uh, year, almost a year, it, May 5th, I believe, was the state board meeting where we ratified his appointment, uh, he has worked night and day on the issues that needed to be tackled, that needed to be addressed when it comes to personnel, when it came to finances, when it came to organizational structure, when it came to leadership in the buildings, when it came to helping teachers fulfill the needs they had in the classrooms, he was there with them through the whole time. And I cannot brag enough about the work that Baker Curris has done uh, since last May when he took on this role. Because this is one of the most difficult things, because we're talking about the capital city of Arkansas and the public school system of the capital city, uh, the, the country looks at Arkansas and looks at what's going on in Little Rock. And as we have now turned the corner, I believe, with the work that Baker and his team have done on the organizational and the financial picture, which we're not out of the woods, but we're certainly in much better position than we were a year ago, it is now time to move to looking to see how we can make a turn on the academic side and having an academic leader that can come in here who has a track record of turning around a large urban district dealing with some of the same complications com complicated issues that we deal with here and uh, Michael Poor from Bentonville before he was in Bentonville he had a mm -hmm. stellar career in Colorado 
in doing just that. And he has a background of working with the teachers' unions, working in the community, working with the minority community, uh, working with a poverty community, and he brought that experience to Arkansas. In the five years that he has been in Bentonville, he has uh, been able to manage a district of tremendous growth. So he has experience with the growth and experience with a, a inner city, a, a urban area that has witnessed a decline and he's been able to manage those very effectively. Many questions have come up over the last few hours of what does this mean moving forward? Well, it means that Baker Curris is gonna continue working uh, as he's told me all the way through his contract June 30th. He's not being fired. There's no, um, it, it is the end of the contract and it is time to shift from the work that he has done to the work uh, that uh, a, a true strong academic leader can do. As far as some of the work that Baker has done and put in place, a West Little Rock Middle School, we're going to keep moving forward on that. A new high school in Southwest Little Rock, we're going to keep moving forward on that. We're not turning back on anything that Baker and his team have put forward. We've worked very closely together on all of those issues. Some things that I'm asking Mike Poor to do is to continue to work to address academic distress and to increase academic excellence throughout the district. It's not simply enough for us to want to get to 49.5% in our academic distress schools. We must create opportunities for those students to exceed that and to excel. We are well on our way to doing that. Mr. Poor will continue that work. I will ask him to establish collaborative partnerships with all area districts, charter schools and community and civic organizations and educators in the district to build support for public education throughout the Little Rock area. This area is going to be known by the quality of its public education. We are going to have world class, Baker has told, talked to you about this time and time again, world class facilities, world class instruction. We're going to continue moving that direction. Speaking of world class, Mr. Poor brings to the table strong experience in providing workforce opportunities, college and technical opportunities in the career and technical focus areas. And one of the things that has, he has done in Colorado and in Northwest Arkansas is establish the business partnerships that put students in a, uh, in a setting where they can learn those skills that at the same time they are uh, growing academically and giving them a chance of moving forward either in a technical field or pursuing their higher education. And over the next few weeks, we're gonna be having more conversation about that. We're gonna be having um, more opportunities to roll some of those ideas out. And I know in visiting with Mr. Poor, he already has some ideas that he's thinking of what it might look like to create these opportunities for students in Little Rock. So uh, at this time, I wanna step aside and uh, allow Mr. Curris to come forward and make some statements. Uh, again, as he comes, I just want to say uh, how much I have appreciated what I've learned from him uh, as an organizational leader, as someone who takes business principles and applies them effectively in an organization the size of the Little Rock School District, and in a way that, judging by the reaction that I've received over the last few hours, uh, there is great love for Baker Curris. And I love him too. And uh, I have asked him, either formally or informally, to stay engaged with Little Rock. And uh, I certainly am looking forward to continuing our relationship, working with him and doing that. So, Baker. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank y'all, please. I don't really have a statement. Um, life marches on, you know. We got a lot of hard work. We had a millenn Millennium Scholar announced today from Hall High School, Erica Braswell. She's our second Millennium Scholar. We also have two Gates Scholars. And uh, we have much to celebrate, much work to be done. Um, I live here. Um, unlike other superintendents who may have been here before and gone somewhere else, I live here. I'll be here and, uh, and uh, be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Questions?
Well, actually, this was a decision that I made uh, and presented to the governor, and, and, uh, and certainly he uh, asked me a lot of questions about the decision and the reasons behind it. And I conveyed to him that uh, at the time that we were uh, last spring looking at what was needed here, we needed that business mind. And we look at where we're moving on from now. I mean, you talk about a window of academic distress. Statutorily, five years is the maximum, and we are one year into that. Um, our role as a state agency, as an ADE, in a state takeover position is to absolutely put the best people in place to correct the concern that created the distress, in this case, academic. A strong academic leader is someone uh, that uh, can move us that direction. Uh, so I certainly honor what the governor would tell me if he uh, uh, has directions for me as, as we have since I came on board. Um, I, I work for him. I certainly understand that the the uh, the ebb and flow of leadership in Little Rock School District has been uh, certainly part of the, the drawback here. But uh, in this case, as I've identified, we had a very specific need last spring uh, for someone like Baker who could come in and repair an organization, and he has done that. And now we have a very specific need to move beyond organizational issues, building on what he has created and have a, a strong academic leader to move things forward. And uh, anyone says, well, what did Baker do wrong? He didn't do anything wrong. He did everything right. He set the stage for success uh, for the next leader to come in and, and move us the direction we want to go. I would say to look at his background, look at Michael Poor's background and the work that he did uh, in Bentonville, in the community, but even more importantly, look back to his time in Colorado, uh, in Colorado Springs and in the Sheridan School District in Colorado, where he has an established track record of uh, getting to know the communities, getting to know the parents, getting to know the teachers, working with them. Uh, I think I'm confident that the parents, the educators, members of the community are really going to like what they see in Mike. They're going to see a servant's heart. And I, I think they will come to, to know that that is someone who can lead us to that next level of, of success. When did you decide to make this change? And was there any event or anything that precipitated you deciding that um, Mr. Perez was not the right man for the job? Well, he, uh, and, and let me, let me kind of change the premise of your question a little bit, Benji, because I'm not saying he wasn't the right man for the job. Jim Collins talks about getting the right people on the bus at the right time and in the right positions, and he was the right man for the job for this transition period that after, right, right after state takeover, right after um, previous superintendent left under a cloud, and he restored a lot of faith. Um, the district now moves forward needing an academic leader. And Baker and I have talked about this on and off for the last several months uh, that uh, about the academic side of things. And um, we had someone who, you asked when I made the decision, uh, I really couldn't point to a certain time. Uh, I've been looking at the overall, I mean, Baker comes every month. We have periodic meetings where we talk about the, uh, the activities, uh, the successes. Uh, the needs academically and, and so really this is something that um, I've been considering not tied to any one instance one moment in time but it's how do I fulfill my responsibility under the statutes of academic distress to move a district to getting off of academic distress and uh, all that weighed into my pro decision making process. It's, uh, it's contract. 
I mean, the, 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 the contract was for a limited time. In Arkansas, we, in most school situations, you see a multi-year contract. In, uh, in this situation, we had a one-year contract. Uh, so looking to see what's the best way to move forward, uh, and as I've invited Baker, and hopefully he will stay engaged with Little Rock on those things that he had done so much work to do, but then moving forward on the academic side, uh, that's, that's where we're going to see the shift and more uh, of, of a experienced leader on the academic end of things. Mr. Yes, Steve. Uh, Yeah. Well, I know from from my perspective, I mean, it's day in, day out, it's uh, nose to the grindstone, and I know that's what he was doing over there. So, um, you know, the opportunities for conversations leading up to, I mean, we were just focused on the work at hand. Um, but if you look at the timing of when superintendent changes get made, this is the time of year that that happens. Uh, you, all over Arkansas, you've seen superintendents uh, who have announced either retirements or moving on and replacements, this is the time of year that that takes place, knowing that working through the end of the fiscal year, June 30th, uh, that's, that's the runway for which the transition can take place. So um, that's, uh, that's how I would respond to that. It, uh, it was something that if we were gonna do it, it needed to be done now so that all the parties could uh, finish that transition work leading up to July 1. Uh, the details of the contract, and that's still in negotiation, uh, salary will be 225000 a year. Uh, I believe he's making two hundred and ten at Bentonville uh, right now, but uh, the details of all that will be forthcoming. Um, what was the first part? Oh, well, I mean, okay, so Michael Poor came to my attention uh, as a fantastic academic leader when I was in the Senate. I got to know him then, and in visiting with him, I, we shared a lot of, of uh, a lot of similar thoughts on what we need to do in Arkansas to move education forward for students. So, he's someone who uh, has been on my radar as as when I've been when I res got to this job as someone who I would like to uh, to work with. Uh, it's in some form or fashion down the road, and then. As uh, we started looking at some of the things last year, um, there were a number of superintendents that were uh, kind of in the in the discussion of, hey, should we talk to this person or that person? Should we talk to Dr. Guess or a, or a, a Jim Rollins in Springdale or a Michael Poor in Bentonville? So there uh, really there have been um, things that have brought him to my mind recently with his presentations here at the state board of the work and the focus and the great work that they did uh, setting up their IGNITE program, which is uh, the, uh, the career and technical program that they have. And at the point that I realized, okay, academically, I have a responsibility to keep moving us here to get out of academic distress, I initiated a conversation with him. And I said, hey, is this something that you'd be interested in talking about? Yeah, um, you know, we consult on a regular basis. I told him a few weeks ago, uh, a couple weeks ago, that uh, the move, how we were going to move forward, um, and then I put them in contact with uh, with each other, and I think they've initiated a, a conversation that will continue over the next few weeks. But Baker, if you want to talk about any of that, uh, any well, that I can, question, I can maybe uh, fill in the a little bit of context there, just factually. Um, I think it was uh, April 1st, a propitious date. Uh, um, I think, I'm not sure of that date, when I, I, I re, again, the commissioner and I met, talked, that was not unusual, and I, I simply said something like, 
uh, June 30 is around the corner. Please give me a indication. Let me know uh, what you think the future holds for me. My contract expires June 30. Something along those lines. I'm not being verbatim. And then um, we met uh, subsequent to that again. Probably talked an hour on substantive matters involving the school district. And at the end of that time, the commissioner advised me that my contract would expire and wouldn't be extended. Simple as that. And uh, were there any other talks before that time that you possibly would have moved in the league or was it just April 1st? Um, no, the, we didn't dwell on that. The commissioner's right. We, we, this is an intense business. We talked about a lot of things, uh, but we didn't talk in, any further into that. No, I didn't. I don't recall. But again, you know, that's just the way it went down. It's fine. And uh, then I talked to Mr. Poor on Saturday this last Saturday. Just a pleasant introductory call. Uh, no substance to it other than just I'll be happy to do what I can to help you transition. That was the end of that. Talking about the future and just the growth of the year, a lot of people have had a lot of conversations about charter schools and their direct stance. And we were talking about charter schools. Did that have any part of this decision? And, and is that any part of LRC's future? Uh, no, it, it wasn't part of this decision uh, as far as whether it has future in LRSD's future uh, well yes by nature of you have charter schools here in the footprint and the directive of the State Board of Education uh, last week was for me to begin the process of, of putting together a broad plan that involves charters uh, Little Rock School District a, a south of the river strategy I think is how it's been termed so uh, what does that look like uh, that is what will be developed in the coming months uh, and presented to the State Board. Commissioner, can you talk about the discrepancy in the Board's educational philosophy as it relates to charter schools and the future of public education, and what do you think it's going to take over the I think uh, if you look at his background, it's one uh, where charters were there in Colorado. I believe that, uh, as, as he conveyed to me, he was actually in a situation where, as leading a public school, he had to take over a failing charter school. Uh, so he has seen many sides of uh, the complicated issues regarding, but he, regarding charter schools. But I think I can uh, uh, really sum it up in saying he's about kids. And uh, he, he, he tries to work within the parameters of the educational landscape that we have. And I think based on his experience in dealing with uh, successful charters, failing charters, competitive charters, however you want to look at it out there, uh, he's going to be well poised to create a situation here where LRSD will be the district of choice when it comes to the, the charter landscape, the public school landscape here. So, But he's very pro-student, pro-kid, and I think his uh, record uh, bears that out. Well, and that's probably a better question to ask him. And uh, once he gets here and gets established and, and sees uh, kind of what that landscape looks like, as, as uh, Baker has so aptly pointed out, you have different charters that serve different student populations here. Uh, certainly I'm not going to get ahead of him and, and his opportunity to uh, get to know the folks here, get to know the school leaders, and really have an opportunity to set forth a vision of what, how he thinks it can look and how he thinks Little Rock can uh, continue to compete and compete well. When you, when you hire the board, do you look at him as more of a long-term fix instead of just something that's temporary? Because that's a lot of concern parents are having. Is, yeah. is this just a Band-Aid or is this someone that is going to stick around? Uh, as he has conveyed to me, he wants this to be as long as, uh, as he can. He would like to work, again, in, a, in an urban school setting. Um, this is something that I think when it comes to academics, uh, one of his previous assignments in Colorado was the, um, the Sheridan School District, and that was the first school district that was removed from the Colorado Academic Watch List, if I remember that correctly, uh, their version of academic distress. And in two years, he was able to remove that school from that list. So, you know, we're talking about a four years left in the statutory window. Uh, I certainly would hope that 
that uh, the community would give him four years. Uh, I would certainly give him four years to accomplish what he needs to accomplish here. Very good question. Because uh, Mike Poor meets the qualifications of a superintendent. And the way uh, last year the state board had to uh, approve waivers because Mr. Curris did not meet the qualifications. Did you consult with the state board before making this decision? Or when did you inform the I, I, Within the last couple of days, I informed the board. Uh, statutorily, this, was, uh, this, this decision rests solely on the commissioner. Uh, and that's a heavy burden. I mean, that is a tremendous burden. Certainly have uh, shared with my leadership team and exchanged thoughts, and we've had a lot of exchange of ideas. But uh, the board was, was, you know, I took the, the board directive last week to heart to say we need to put together a plan. And uh, as I weighed the decision, I certainly think uh, Mr. Poor is able to, uh, to move that forward. And I think Baker... Uh, in it, whether it be a formal or informal role, will be a chief advisor in, uh, in creating that plan. And I hope that uh, he, and I've invited him to stay on, and whether it's formal or informal, I uh, certainly hope that he will continue to work with us uh, developing that. It would seem to me, though, that that would be a pretty instrumental part of that plan. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, that uh, they were informed at the point in time that I was able to inform them uh, because Mr. Poor had some considerations. I mean, this was more than just me making a decision. He had considerations that he had to make, and before I could actually uh, inform everyone, I had to get a confirmation from him that we were a go, and that didn't happen until um, Sunday evening. Conversation with Baker was prior to that, but the final decision from uh, Mr. Poor was was over the weekend. Yeah. Well, the April first one was just kind of a uh, uh, Baker conveyed that very accurately. You know, he he asked me, hey, if, if let me know in the contracts coming up, and that was a good question to ask. Superintendents all over the state are asking those same questions, um, but uh, at that point in time, there had been no decision. Um, which administration? Uh, well, um, gosh, I don't know. Um, the, all that transpired in public. I haven't um, belabored those uh, points with anyone else, certainly not the governor and not the commissioner. You know, I've got a background of, uh, oh, I guess you would call it advocacy, and uh, I shake hands when the meeting's over and move on. And that's what I did, and so I haven't I haven't discussed that with anyone. Well, uh, the first thing I, I will tell you is we got a marvelous team. Okay, uh, Little Rock has been mischaracterized frequently uh, because it's disorganized or it had been perhaps that, that, and I don't want to be pejorative in that, in that term, but simply because you're disorganized doesn't mean you don't have a good team. It means you've got to get organized. Uh, and that happens uh, with great people who are fully committed, and that's who we've got, got great people, and they're fully committed and, and working really hard, working on, I told somebody the other day we had a Saturday meeting, started at 8 o'clock, I brought the donuts, and not a single person was late. They weren't a second late. They were early because they want to get to work and they want to work hard. So um, in that sense, these things that are happening now that are improvements are going to continue. Uh, we're in a continuous improvement process because we have a systematic approach to education that can be uh, amplified where it needs to be, can be changed where it needs to be, and can be modified where it needs to be. But it's the same approach everywhere consistently across the board. And you train people to do that sort of thing and then they get a hold of it and then they make it better because you empower them to do their jobs. And that's what's going to bear fruit here, okay? Uh, it's already showing up. 
it'll continue to show up. We're taking high stakes tests right now, and I'm so proud of our teachers. We've got a, the best relationship we've ever had with our teachers, and we cannot let that slip away. No matter what else happens, uh, we cannot let that slip away. We have to bring that power uh, forward and, and uh, leverage that because that's where teaching and learning takes place. Well, I don't think we'll be in academic distress for five years. I got really bad news. If people are waiting around for us to be in academic distress for five years, I don't think that's going to happen. And if you compare Little Rock to its peer group right now, there's a real question in my mind about the, the level and severity of the distress. I, don't, I think that needs to be analyzed. And if, if nothing else, our team now is data driven. Um, we've got people in this room who know how to analyze data. And I, frankly, my strengths are in that area as well. And um, so I don't, I don't think the five-year plan was ever a five-year plan in my mind. Uh, at some point, you have to uh, run the machine. You know, you have to crank it up, find out what's wrong with it, fix it, and then let it roll. And we're at the let it roll stage. And um, so I'm just so proud of our team and so proud of our teachers and so proud of our students. I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll have a good uh, uh, run of testing right now. We took the Iowa test last week. Now we're in the ACT testing window, and we'll see how that goes, but I'm very hopeful. You mentioned earlier, you know, you're someone who comes to the state every year. Uh, Senator Linda Chesterfield mentioned earlier today, she criticized the decision of someone coming from out of the district or not appointed to the school board seating. How does someone coming from that background become acquainted with the community in the district? Well, um, everybody's different. Everybody's personality is different. Uh, so I wouldn't presume to give advice to a, a man I don't know about how to go about his business. Uh, but it is Arkansas. It's a it's a face to face kind of place. I guess I know everybody in here practically. Uh, it's that kind of place. Um, I like Methodist ministers who move the chairs when the eating's over with. <laughs> and I think that's a pretty good uh, lesson for superintendents. Uh, but I wouldn't presume to to tell any any person uh, how to make acquaintances and how to build trust, uh, but it's essential. And it, it, it's, it has to be done carefully and it has to be sincere. And, uh, and uh, that's, that's been the gratifying thing about my experience here. Uh, so many good people. Yes, sir, Steve. When you were named to this position, you were met with a lot of discontentment from both the education community and the community at large. And in the past year, it seems like you've really managed to kind of bridge those gaps. It's kind of gratifying to see that people are now asking you to stay Well, you know, I respect everybody that, that has an opinion, okay? And uh, you're right. <laughs> I've, I, there are a lot of different opinions when I took this position. And I respect those opinions. And I never, I never, uh, I never judged any, anybody or, or restricted access to my office, to anyone who disagreed with me. Uh, I built bridges every chance I could. I think that's common sense. Um, and so I was, I'm pleased that that occurred. And, um, you know, it is, it's an interesting world, and uh, it's odd to see it turn, but it, it also, if there's a lesson in any of this, it's that the community has to come together. We don't have any choices. We can't separate ourselves. Uh, ultimately, when the chips are down, teaching and learning occurs in a classroom between a willing student and a qualified teacher, and we can't lose sight of that. So we've got to promote that every chance we get, and it takes a lot of work. And, and it's difficult to do if you're not working cooperatively. So that would be my only thought with respect to that, if that answers the question. Well, I'll, we'll, you know, we'll get him uh, up to speed on an awful lot of things that are in motion right now. I mean, we've got uh, major issues to confront the, the financial a uh, picture here is tenuous, it's difficult, it may, and it's, it's dynamic, it's not gonna stay the same. You know, let's just say we build a West Little Rock school and put a thousand kids in there, and we pull them out of uh, uh, some of the other schools where they're presently attending. Changes the picture a little bit, for the better, but by the same token, depending on what else happens, the picture could rapidly change in the other direction. So you're not writing 
a, a plan based on the static condition that exists on day one. You have to write a plan that takes into account the things that may change. And those are very dynamic situations. Construction costs make a huge difference. Inflation could make a huge difference to our school district. And personnel management has to be key. So we're, we, we'll have, I'll, I'll give him all of my up-to-date thoughts on that, and we've got plenty of that. I'll give him, we'll have a, a plan on uh, current status of some major personnel changes we're in the midst of, uh, departmental reorganizations. We'll just try to give it uh, everything we've got between now and July the 1st. Um, and then and make a clean handoff, do the best we can. Work hard every day. I got up this morning at 3.30, fed my dogs. They jumped around. I mean, I, if we can only have the enthusiasm of a dog. <laughs> I mean, they get the same thing to eat every morning. And they, I'll show you the picture if you want to see it. They're jumping around, wagging their tails, and they're saying, let's greet today. Let's make the most of this. You know, let's enjoy what, what we've got in front of us, even if it's the same old Purina dog chow. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's kind of my attitude. I'm going to tear into it every day from here on out. I'm going to take a short vacation that's been planned for months, so please don't assume that I'm leaving town because I've got some reason to leave town. It's only because I've got, we've got the plane tickets bought. I'll be gone Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. I'll be back in the office on Wednesday. And then we're going to just uh, rip and run as best we can between now and July the 1st and, and uh, see where we end up. Well, you know, I wasn't looking for a job when I found this one. So, <laughs> and I'm, and I'd, uh, this is a, this has been a, a, a labor of love for me. Do you want to stay on as a Tennessee Voter Consultant? Well, I, I want to, I want to help the school district. Uh, you know, that's what I want to do. So that's complicated um, because if you've ever been a, a business executive, you don't want to crowd anybody else. It's critical. You got to have somebody's got to be in charge. You know. Uh, and I'm, if I'm not in charge, I'm not in charge. I could play that role, but that's going to be tricky. But I will be here for the school district and the kids that, that attended uh, as long as I'm breathing air. I, I didn't go there. You know, I studied corporation law under Louis Laws, okay? He wrote the book on corporations. And what it says is, is that there are three kinds of uh, parties who are involved in a corporate transaction. They're the owners, shareholders, you might say, in a corporation. They're the directors, and they're the executives. I clearly understand my role. I'm the executive, okay? And the board makes decisions that the board makes. And then I execute those decisions, and that's exactly what I did. I asked the commissioner, he gave me the answer. That's the way it went down, and, uh, and I haven't looked back. Well, um, you mean the expansions of East Dem and Lisa? They're off the table. I mean, they're, they're, in, they're a thing that's in the works. I don't know. You know, it, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. I, and I love to compete. So, I mean, we're making plans every day to be the, the best we can be, to give parents options that they'll accept, and then to enroll as many kids that want to take advantage of the best school district in, in, uh, th that serves this area. And if you compare us apples to apples, and I'm not selling right now, but I'm, you ask the question, compare apples to apples and look at our results. Look at them all. They just popped out. They're in the newspaper. Just look at the results. And then I think we've got a pretty good story to tell. And it's getting better every day. We're just focused on getting better. A little bit better every day makes a difference. And that's what we're doing. So I'm real proud of our team. And I'm not worried about the competition. Uh, my dad told me when I was, went to law school, he, I said, Pop, I'm really worried, man. There's lawyers under every rock. And he said, Baker, there's always room at the top. And uh, that's where we want to be. All right. Thank you all.